Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of Harp Tuesday. I'm going to be continuing my look at arranging Skyboat Song. Lots to talk about, but I think what I'll do is start by playing sort of half of what I've got so far. chorus. So yeah, uh, welcome to Harp Tuesday. And it's, I, I checked, it's been almost exactly three months ago since the first episode of this Arranging Skyboat Song project, which was inspired by years ago, my Arranging Greensleeves project. And uh, for the first episode, you got to see me compose in real time or, or arrange in real time as I was fiddling around with stuff. And I, I, I put something together. I think it was an introduction and uh, the, the, the chorus. But very soon after, I realized I just wasn't entirely happy with that. And I felt somewhat conflicted in terms of the direction that I wanted to go. So as I had mentioned in that episode, I had in mind when I started trying to arrange Skyboat Song, an arrangement for, for a beginner, for somebody maybe not completely new to the harp, but something that wouldn't be too hard, that would be good to use with students who who were fairly new to the harp. I mean, it's such an iconic song, right? It's a great song. And I wanted to have a really nice arrangement that was also reasonably easy. And, and yet, as I was working on it, I was also feeling sort of pulled in another direction of, of maybe a more challenging arrangement. So for green sleeves, for example, I had no clear goal with that. And I ended up writing something for me, um, primarily, right? So that the, the pedal harp version with that last, um, uh, the... last variation, it actually is pretty challenging. The The lever harp version is, is not so bad, but the, the full version for pedal harp is quite, is quite hard um, because I was writing it for myself. And that's great, you know, that, that's fun to do, right? To, to, to sort of write exactly what you feel uh, maybe inspired to write and, and not worrying about the the outcome or, or how easy or difficult it will end up being to be played. Of course, it's good to make sure it is playable, but, um, uh, and also I think partly the piece. So I just posted a video of this, this beautiful Lauda uh, to Santa Maddalena, um, this early, early church music, I can't find out that much about it, but it's in Kim Robertson's book, uh, Celtic Harp Solos. And that is an example of a piece that suits, that lends itself to a very sparse arrangement, right? There's not a lot going on in that one. And and that's perfect. Whereas a Skyboat Song, uh, you know, I kept wanting to do some... Some, some syncopated stuff and all, all this stuff. And I just wasn't sure that that meshed with this idea of trying to make something nice and accessible. 
So I, uh, fairly soon after I did that last episode, that uh, first episode, um, I came up with a slightly different introduction and chorus. So let me let me just walk you through that. So it's just this. Again, I wanted that that kind of watery, uh, rocking feeling at the beginning of this for this intro. And again, my my sorry secondary goal as I as I went into this was to try to utilize some knocking on the soundboard. Um, and so in this case, establishing this. Playing around a little bit by by placing those beats every quarter instead of every dotted quarter because we're in six eight, so normally it'd be every dotted quarter. Uh, a little bit of fun with rhythm there, and and really on this all I'm doing right is adding the second or the ninth. Uh, it's G a big G chord arpeggio plus the A, and then. into the first chorus. And I know in that first episode I talked about, well, I wanted to do something, you know, really simple but beautiful and, and maybe trying to avoid a bunch of 158s. And I've ended up using a bunch of 158s. So let's talk about 158 for a moment. If you not, if that's not a familiar term, it, it's basically referring to what you can think of as the shape where if we're playing a G chord, we find the G, that's the one, right? The first note, so say G down here. Counting that, including that first note, we count up five strings. So G, A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, five. That's a fifth up. And eight is always an octave, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or five, six, seven, eight. You know, eight's always an octave. So we get this shape with, uh, starting from the bottom, a fifth up and then an octave. Of course, starting from the top, it's, it's the fourth down. And that's referred often as a one, five, eight shape. It's a great accompaniment pattern and it fits really nicely under the hand and it also sounds good because what can happen is if we do say a three note chord whether it's a root position or some inversion as we get lower on the harp it starts to get pretty muddy to have that third to go from G to B or a D chord down here it tends to be more pleasing to our ear to have a little bit more space. Especially in these lower registers. You'll notice later on up uh, in some slightly higher, higher registers, I'm doing some three note root position shapes. But anyway, I do end up using a lot of this 158. And again, it's uh, partly because it just, it's, it, the reason it gets used so often is it sounds good. And I wanted to, rather than doing, I think in the that first episode, I had uh, it's here somewhere. I, ha I had some some sort of sort of offbeat stuff going on in the left hand, but I wanted to just get a nice reoccurring pattern going in that left hand and, and, and on this chorus. So. I'm just doing root position 158 throughout all that. Now I still have yet to figure out how many sort of little grace notes and uh, elaborations you heard there. Um, I want to write in, and I'll probably write them in as, as with parentheses, right? Add them if you wish. Um, they're sort of embellishments of that tune. Uh, nice to have them sometimes, but not required and, and one could always make up your own on that, right? Um, so, and then this little, ah, sorry. Little transition, throwing in a couple more slaps and again, uh, I'll continue to play around with it. So that was, I did that. I did that after that first episode and I felt happier with that. Um, and, and again, it's, it's kind of developing that, that one's own sort of sense because you can't be, you don't want to be so critical that you never do anything because you think, oh, this is terrible. But for me, I found that I tend to know when I've kind of gone down a dead end. Um, that I, I, so composing something right along, oh, added some more. And then sometimes I'll run into a spot where I'm like, oh, okay, well, actually, I'm gonna back up a little bit this, this path I took. 
is not taking me in the direction that I want. So developing that, that sort of sense of, of whether you're going where you want. And I felt this was a better direction. Um, but again, I still felt kind of conflicted and I haven't done anything with this for, for quite some time. And actually that, uh, I know at the end of the Green Sleeves project, I did a episode talking about creativity and, and there's an interesting book called The War for Art. Let's do the Art of War. Uh, yeah, interesting book, potentially worth a read. And he, he, he talks about this idea of the resistance that, that, that you know, there's um, uh, something external kind of stopping us from creating. And, and I, I, it's an interesting idea because I think it's one thing to practice where you know what you're going to practice. And of course, deliberate practice when you're really engaged can be quite demanding on, on the brain, but it, it's a, trying to create requires a different type of focus. And I think it's really easy for the mind to kind of reject that and say, oh, this is, uh, nothing's happening. It's not working. And, and so the, I think the biggest secret to creating, right, is, is putting in the time um, that it's not sufficient to put in the time. In other words, just putting the time won't guarantee that you're going to create something you're happy with, but it is necessary. You're not going to create something that you're happy with. You're not going to create anything unless you actually put some time in it. So I haven't been putting any time into this, um, which is too bad. But yesterday, actually, I, I, I got inspired um, or whatever. I, I put the time in and I ended up getting something I'm really happy with. I got all four verses. Um, so I want to talk to you through a little bit then of what I'm doing. So what I'm doing is I'm keeping the that chorus pretty much the same with, again, maybe throwing in some grace notes. And then on the verse, things change. So the first verse, um, we, we get a little return, we get this. Um, oh, sorry, where is it? First verse is. Actually, I did this as well. I did this first verse as well. Uh, a couple months ago. Um, sorry for the tuning. Okay, there we are. Second verse then, and you should have seen, I, I put the words up because I think I, I did, I printed out the words, right? Um, just to just to have that to in, potentially inspire me a little bit. So then the second verse, right? where many as a lad fought on that day, well the claymore would, could wield, when night came, silently lay dead in Culloden's field. And so this verse, second verse then, um, again, we get the back to the chorus. Um, and I was gonna, Again, this, this sort of martial thing. So trying to have the, these drums accenting the ones of so one, two, three, one, two, three. And now here, the, while the Claymore could wield, so there's that martial quality. And then when the night came, so coming up here, playing now around with the with the tune a little bit, instead of going. No dead on the field. And back into the chorus. So trying to, again, play off of the words a little bit there and as well as on the second, uh, sorry, the third and fourth verse. So anyway, I'm excited to have, have put this down. Now it's a matter of kind of polishing it, making some decisions. For example, in the intro, how many bars of intro do I actually want? Putting in those grace notes. Again, just kind of polishing things around, but uh, at least I have pretty much the, the, the entire piece down. I also got to figure out exactly how I want to do the ending. I, I have a good idea, but I haven't, I haven't written down um, for sure. So I think one more episode maybe on this and uh, 
a finished Skyboat song. So I'm happy with this so far. And uh, I encourage you to go out there and, and create something, compose something, arrange something, and have fun. And I will see you uh, in two weeks' time. Cheers. <laughs>